Hi, I'm Dave Lawrence from the California Type Foundry. I use Font Lab 7 to design my fonts, and I want to show you how you can make great fonts using Font Lab 7. This video, mostly I'm talking about my workflow. I call this an episodic workflow because you're not doing a uh, assembly line workflow. So that doesn't, so what that means is you're not doing like the art for all your symbols, then you do the drawing and the program and the tracing for all your symbols, then you do all the balancing for every single symbol, then you do the hinting for every symbol, and the side brightness for every symbol, and the kerning for every symbol. I'm not, I'm trying to, I don't like that way because assembly line, in my experience with art, assembly line makes sort of more, uh, ah, well, I'd say garbage. Um, because it's not like a factory. Everything is unique. You can't just be like, unless you are the type that does like the same thing every single time you're doing it. So if you're the, so assembly line works great if you like a Mozart sort of person where he's written the same piece a hundred times, you know, that is okay because then you know how to do the first part and then the second part, then someone else does the copyist work and you know that you don't have to see how things fit through. But when we are doing this, mostly the uppercase is going to be a little bit with the lowercase, but mostly uppercase is with the uppercase and mostly lowercase is with the lowercase. That's why we do all this together. This is also how Bodoni used to do his stuff. Um, it works It works well. He, he used to think of it, it was more like you did one set of lowercase, another set of lowercase, another set, and then you just had, so if you had the Ascendonica, uh, size of font or testino, then you would just make the you would just do everything at that size. I mean, and and so you would just make a, you know a couple of pairs of caps at that size and a bunch of lower cases. Um, that's why some of the fonts of the old time stuff, some of the these capitals are really dark because they would use a you know a version that didn't work so well. But um, with being able with software, you can then rework this as much as you, you know, if you need to at a later stage. So that's what's great about it. So another reason why this is good is because when you do, so I'm doing this because since mine is a titling font, it's going to be mostly uppercase. And then the lowercase is going to be sort of small caps that are sort of floating, floating small caps, I guess. <laughs> so since that's what my lowercase is. Those are a lot less important because most of the stuff is going to be here. So I start with the most important thing because usually whatever you start with, that's the one that gets the most work done on them. And what you do last, you can do the fastest, but it's also you have the less drafts of it. So you do less of that. And that's why a lot of people, if they're doing writing, what they start on, the beginning is usually much stronger than the ending. So it takes a special person or someone who starts maybe from the ending to have then have the ending be stronger than the beginning. Okay, so hinting. Um, this is this is the first time I'm trying this. Is I'm trying. I, I got sick of doing all the hinting at the ending. Um, this is OTF hinting I'm talking about. Um, I sort of got tired of doing all the hinting at the end, and then my things were too tall, and then it made it so that I made a mistake in how tall I made things and. And, and stuff, and then that would carry over to the lowercase. So this time, I'm gonna do the hinting right now after the balancing. And then after that, we'll do the more on the side bearings. We'll do more of the side bearings. And then after that, kerning. And what's great about this workflow is that when you do all the kerning to get all this stuff together, kerning can be about, um, for me, it's been about 33% of the work, um, you know, up to 33%. Sometimes it's only like, 20%, but up to 33% of the work. So when you do this first and then you do the kerning, well, guess what? We only have to kern this with one guy. We only have to do one set of kerning, which is the uppercase with the uppercase. So that helps a lot. Um, if you are doing this, you can also do this workflow if you have multiple masters. Like I said here, um, what you do in that case is you take the uppercase kerning, um, and then you, if you start with your regular and then you have a black or something, you just copy that kerning into the black. And then you copy that and then you just check it out, make sure that it's okay. 
And then if you have a light, then you just copy the regular kerning into the light and then you just check it to make sure it's okay. So you can do kerning way faster than doing it sort of the single one at a time and then check out 5,000 pairs <laughs> in one day in a, in a week and, and, then, and then have sort of a, that, that's what makes it so boring. Um, that's kerning to me is super important. It's one, it's not that bad. It's, it's what doing the letters is all about side bearings and spacing. Cause half of it of how the letters look is just how that they um, are the rhythm of them, how they're pushed together. And since I come from music, that's, there's the two parts of music, which is melody, which is sort of your vertical aspect. And then your horizontal aspect is rhythm. So rhythm is just as important and some, in some types of music more important than what melody you got. So to me, how the rhythm of how these things fit together is just as important as how each character looks. Because this could look totally messed up if I had it spaced it poorly. Um, okay, and by breaking up the kerning, you don't go nuts, and then you learn things. You go, oh, wait, there's some stuff that's messed up. And then you can just, since you haven't done so much, you haven't like kerned this with all the lowercase and all that junk, you can just change drawings as needed at this step because you haven't done too much uh, with other things. So it allows you at this kerning stage to then modify your drawings as needed. Okay, so I'm talking to you about workflows. This workflow is based on two things. It is based on how Bodoni uh, would work, which, which is he did lowercase and uppercase separately. So I like to break things up into pieces. This helps a lot in reducing monotony. If you've ever had one of those, you've done a big font family, and then you had to do a just kerning forever, this gets rid of that. You're going to have at most kerning for, I did a family of um, six masters and I had at most, I, I did have a day of one of the biggest kerning groups was I think punctuation. And I, I think I had two and a half days of kerning in a row for six masters and doing all the kerning. So this workflow is also based on the um, lean, uh, lean um, production. It's it's a book. I can't remember the exact name. It has a picture of a waterfall on the front. Lean production, and it there's a bunch of math in it. I didn't quite understand everything, but essentially, by repeating this cycle more times, you are sort of perfecting your process for each font. So I usually repeat this about seven times uppercase and lowercase and numbers, etc., and then a uh, punctuation. I go in order of what I think is the most important for that font. A lot of times I'm going to start with the lowercase first because usually that is more important for that font. Okay, so I prefer that than doing it. So this is sort of the fun step, right? If you did all this in a row and then you did it for your entire font, then all of a sudden all your fun stuff is over. Now you don't have any more fun stuff. You just have the, you know, the, the more work sort of things like hinting or doing your side bearings or kerning. Um, so this spreads out the fun and the chores. So that's why for art, I found that doing the opposite of this would be assembly line, which would be do the drawing for the uppercase, do the drawing for the lowercase, do the drawing for the periods, the uh, punctuation, and then the special symbols. And then all your uh, other things. So that is not, I found that that doesn't make good art. That makes rush, that, that's good for producing same thing of medium quality over and over and over, like Starbucks coffee or something. Um, you don't wanna do that with art because then when you get bored and you're not excited about what you're doing, then your work suffers. So you want to have a workflow that makes you excited as much as you can be throughout the entire process. Okay, I'm going to stop that video while we're ahead. Thank you for watching.